Snoop, and you're watching Snips and Snacks. Guess I'll be snooping around this area today. I'll be watching and listening to people speaking English. Okay, time to snoop now. Aha! Voices! And they're coming from over there. That was scary. No, I don't think so. In fact, I wasn't afraid at all. What do you think? Were you afraid, William? Me? No. I've been doing extreme stuff like that since I was six years old. Oh well, maybe I should do it a few more times. You know, to overcome my fear. Uh, where's Ryan and Ibrahim's campsite? Over, Over there. there. Oh look, you guys don't know where they're camping? What if we get lost? What if a tiger attacks us something? Calm down, Nava. We were just joking. Of course we know where it is. Right, Isaac? Yes, we certainly do. It's just a few meters in that direction. Hello? Yep. Oh. Okay. Yes, yes. Right. Got it. Thank you. Oh, bye. That was Ibrahim. He can't see us from his campsite. He wants to know why we're walking in the opposite direction when the campsite is that way. Oops. Hey, no, wait, slow down. Yeah, wait. What if we get lost? What if a tiger attacks us or something? What if... Wait! Boys. Well, here's my snoop report. Let's start with Isaac's response to what Nawal said. No, I don't think so. In fact, I wasn't afraid at all. When Isaac said, No, I don't think so. He was actually disagreeing with Nawal. You see, we disagree when we have a different opinion from someone else. Let's see that one again. No, I don't think so. In fact, I wasn't afraid at all. So, the form that Isaac used was the sentence, No, I don't think so. And Isaac used the form to carry out the function of disagreeing. His function was to disagree. Now let's look at what Nawal said. Uh, where is Ibrahim's and Ryan's campsite? Over there! So, what was Nawal doing? She was inquiring, asking. We inquire when we ask someone for information. Let's look at that scene again. Uh, where is Ryan's and Ibrahim's campsite? Over there! So, Nawal used the form, where is Ryan and Ibrahim's campsite, to perform the function of inquiring. What she did was to inquire. Okay, one more to go. Let's replay that scene where Isaac confirms something that William said. Yes, we certainly do. It's just a few meters in that direction. But they certainly didn't. <laughs> so, what was Isaac doing? That's right, he was confirming what William said. When we confirm something, we say that something is definitely true by providing more proof. Let's look at what Isaac said again. Yes, we certainly do. It's just a few meters in that direction. Well, we certainly do was the form that Isaac used to confirm what William said. In other words, he used it to confirm that both he and William knew the way to the campsite. Okay, enough forms and functions. 
I'll go snoop around for something else. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Must be an interesting book. Yes, a great story called Potato People. Ha! Huh. Potato People by Angela Wright, right? Right! I'm sorry, but I didn't get your name. Huh? Where did she go? Potato People Angela Wright The main character of that story Um, I can't remember I know it takes place in Ireland Ah, oh, give up I think I have to put Plan B into action Hi, Susie Snoop. How can I help you? Hi, Vasanta. I need some help with literature again. Do you remember the story Potato People? You know, the one by Angela Wright? Of course I do. Great. Can you tell my friends about it? Sure, I'd love to. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Susie. Hi. I'm Mrs. C, and today we are going to talk about the novel entitled The Potato People. The Potato People is a story set in the early 1840s in Ireland when there was a terrible famine because of a disease called potato blight. You see, in Ireland, the main or the staple diet was potatoes, and this disease killed all the crops there leaving the people undernourished and famished for food. This story is seen through the eyes of a 16-year-old boy called Patrick Flynn, who finally has to leave his village called Skalgorak in Ireland, and he moves away to America. On his journeys there, he meets up with a gypsy girl called Maria, and both of them go through a lot of hardships in the end, they settle down in America with the hope of leading a better life. The great hunger of the 1840s was the greatest catastrophe in the history of Ireland. A poor Ireland, under the rule of the British, was mainly dependent on its potato crop. Due to a plant disease known as potato blight, the potato harvest failed year after year. England was slow to react to the situation. Millions of people died of starvation, and epidemics spread like wildfire. When poor villagers could not pay rent, landlords with the help of the British soldiers burnt down their homes. Patrick, I don't want us all to be forgotten. Somebody must get through all this and remember what happened here. I want you to leave Ireland. Go to America. America? How can I without any money for a ticket, Sean? I'll get the money for both of us. Listen, I'll meet you at the Three Cats Inn in Cork at the end of the month. Now go.
Does this road go to Cork? Yes, and you can walk with me. I'm Peter O'Connor, and this is Mary. Uh, hello. I'm Patrick. Let's buy a nice, juicy meat pie. I imagine it must have been a long time since you had one. Patrick, you best go on your own. I'm taking Mary to see a doctor. See you in America, Patrick. I smell fresh bread. If you come here, I'll share it with you. You must be an angel. I was so hungry. I'm Patrick. And I'm Marie, a gypsy princess. I've been all over the world. Let me read your future. Your hand is so dirty. You're going on a long journey far away. You will become a soldier and very rich too. You'll marry a beautiful princess and have a happy life. Come on! I know a place where we can get lots of food to eat. Sean, it's me, Patrick. Patrick, is it really you? There is a ship called Zeus sailing out soon. Go and buy tickets for both of you. But Sean, I have so many questions to ask you. Go now and get your tickets. I will answer all your questions soon enough. Trust me. He killed a caretaker and stole his landlord's money box. He's a murderer and a thief. He's a murderer and a thief. He's a murderer. And He's a thief. murderer and a thief.
Goodbye, my dearest Sean. Goodbye, my beautiful island. I will never forget you both. Goodbye. The novel has several characters, at least three main characters and a few other minor characters. Now, Patrick Flynn is a main character who's loyal, dedicated, very patriotic and brave. On the other hand, there is this bright, free-spirited, optimistic, happy young girl called Marie. She's actually a gypsy. And she's full of life and always smiling and dancing. And she's brave too. She's determined to travel alone. And on her journey to America, she meets up with Patrick. Now, both of these young people have a friend in Sean. Sean is that brave guy himself. He is determined to get away from all of this hardship and frustration and he's working very hard as well to get the villagers out of it. The theme is the central idea of any novel. Now, in The Potato People, we have three main themes. Now, the first main theme is the search for happiness. Due to the potato blight, the villagers' lives are miserable. Their potato harvest is next to nothing and they have lost their only source of income. Now they are starving. They are miserable people because their lives are now infected, not only with hardship, but also with chronic dis diseases like dysentery and cholera. Their only hope is to leave Ireland, and their search for happiness ends when they land in America. Now, the second main theme is hope and despair. Despair it is when they have lost sight of any life. No potatoes, no food, no income. They have become the cruel victims of evil Mr. Grayston and the soldiers who come in and burn their villages. Hope comes in a new light when they hear of America and that is where they all go. And finally, the last main theme is about poverty and hardship. This is a novel which shows us how the Irish actually work their lives in this whole arena of hardship, how poor they become and it is in this poverty and in this hardship that they struggle to find a new life. And they find this new life in America. Now, in The Potato People, we see three very clear values. Value number one. In value number one, we must work hard to have a wonderful life. Everyone has to be diligent and responsible and make sure that life is good for them. Moral value number two is to know that in all our lives undertakings, we will face difficulties of any sorts, but we must be brave and strong to face these difficulties so that we may overcome them. Moral value number three is about being optimistic and knowing that one day life out there is going to be good and to work towards that good ending. Well, that's Potato People for you. So go get the book and read it and enjoy. Bye. Hi, Vasantha. Hi, Susie. My job for today is done. Thanks for helping me out again. Bye. Bye. Do I hear music? Someone singing? I'd better check it out.
Ready? Yeah. Let's go. One, two, one, two, three, four. We've been practicing since two hours ago and it still does not sound right. I guess we just gotta keep on practicing until it's perfect. Yeah, and the auditions will be held tomorrow. Yeah, and we haven't much time left. Okay, uh, I'll play the intro and you repeat the first verse again one more time. Okay. Yeah. Hit it, Maestro. Yeah. Oh no! Wait, what happened? I think my guitar wants to take a break. What do you mean? Goodbye, Malaysian Idol. Now I'll never become famous. This is my fault. I'm sorry. Now nah, it's no one's fault. Just what's meant to be. Yeah, you're right. We'll try again next year. Yeah. Come on, let's go. Over the rainbow. Well, well, I've noted two mistakes that Ibrahim made. I hope you noted them down too. Let's go through them one by one, shall we? We've been practicing since two hours and it still does not sound right. Gosh, since two hours? Ibrahim used the wrong word. He should have used four, not since. Why? Because we use for when we say how long something lasts. We use for with a period of time. What about since? Well, we use it with the time that shows when an activity started. So, this is how it should have sounded. We've been practicing for two hours and it still does not sound right. Here's Ibrahim's second mistake. Okay, uh, I'll play the intro and you repeat the first verse again one more time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now that's funny. Repeat again one more time. <laughs> Excuse me. That's just like saying, I'll play the intro and you repeat, repeat and repeat the first verse. You see, the word repeat already means to do something again. So, we need not use the word again and we certainly don't need to make it worse by adding one more time to the sentence. Okay, I'll play the intro and you repeat the first verse. Okay. Ah, that's more like it. Oh, it's almost bedtime. See you in the morning. Bye. Hi. I talked to some of the children again while I was snooping and gave them something to look at. Then I asked them questions. Here's what happened. Okay, I asked William this question. How many hours would each tuition session last? A. One and a half hours, B. Two hours, and C. Two and a half hours. Er, let's see. It starts at 8 and finishes at half past 10. From 8 to 9 is one hour. From 9 to 10 is two hours. And from 10 to half past 10 is half an hour. So, all in all, it takes two hours and thirty minutes. That's C, two and a half hours. Well done, William. C is the answer. Isaac answered this question. On which food item do these Form 2 students spend the most? A. Fried chicken B. Nasi lemak C. 
roti canai or D burgers. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. I'll have to look at the highest bar and the graph. Ah, yes, I see it, and uh, it's labeled as burgers. So the answer is D. Burgers. Well done, Isaac. This is Ina's question. Ina, you probably see the sign at the A. Zoo B. Market or C. Museum Hmm. It can't be the market because they don't feed animals there. The museum? No. The animals are all stuffed, so they don't need to eat. So the answer is obviously A, the zoo. Wonderful! Smart kids, they got all the answers right. Hmm, time sure flies when you're snooping around. So, make sure you join us on episode 3 of Snips and Snaps. Bye!